Hello ethical hackers and welcome again to this new episode of the WASP Doctrine training series. In this hands-on idle tutorial, you will access other users' data, impersonate other users, hunt for hard IDs, and delete other users' data. If you don't know what IDOR means, I highly recommend you read the article linked in the description box. That way, you will take full advantage of this video. Also, I will be releasing new similar hands-on tutorials to help you practice security vulnerabilities, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. In this challenge, we are going to manipulate a basket of another user and add a product to it. So let's try to add a product to our own basket. Click add to basket button. Let's add another one. And let's go to our basket. All right, we have our two products. Let's see what's happening in the HTTP requests. So we have a post request going to the basket items endpoint. We are adding the product ID number one to the basket with ID number nine, and we're choosing a quantity of one. Now, what happens if we change the basket ID? Let's see that. Okay, let's target another basket. Let's say, for example, eight. Okay, so we have an unauthorized re response, which means that either the basket doesn't exist or the basket ID is not authorized for change. Let's try to enumerate all the baskets for four so that we can eliminate the first hypothesis. So it seems that this is the right request we are getting using the get HTTP verb, the basket with ID nine. And 200 OK means that the bucket exists and we get the content of the basket as response. So let's try to change from 9 to 8 to verify that the basket exists. All right, we have a success, but we don't have any products. Let's see, basket number 6. OK, so here we have a, a list of all the products. Let's target basket with number six. Let's go back to our request where we add the product to the basket and try to target the basket number six. All right, now we are sure that there is some kind of verification behind the scenes to verify that the basket ID is authorized. But let's see if we can bypass this. If we add another key to the JSON post data, this is like HTTP parameter pollution, but in the JSON context. And let's make this second field equals to our basket ID, which is nine. Okay, we still get an unauthorized response. Let's flip them around. So instead of six, we inject nine and vice versa. Okay. Now we were able to change the basket ID number six, which is our target basket. And this happens, I mean, it depends on how developers write their code. Here, the code is checking if you have the authorization to edit the first element and the basket which gets modified is the one declared in the second position. So yeah, sometimes you find weird behavior and it's just a matter of poking around and trying to find how to exploit it. So we were able to view another user's basket and from there we manipulated the basket to add our own products. Here we are again on OWASP Web Code and let's go to the broken access control menu and choose insecure direct object references. Let's go to challenge two and this is our first step. In fact, because IDOR is access control issue, we need to first log in into the application. So we are going to use the Tom user with the cat password. All right. Now that we are authenticated, let's see the next challenge. So let's configure our proxy. And let's hit the view profile button. And right away, you can see that you have three items, name, Tomcat, color yellow, and size small. Let's see in OWASP zap what's happening. 
as you can see here, we have a call to web code idor slash profile endpoint, and we get a response containing a JSON object. But notice that we have two new items which don't show up in the user interface, the role and the user ID. So let's go back to the application. We can go to the fourth challenge where we will really experiment with the idle vulnerability. Let's try to mess with it. So we'll grab our user ID. So the idea here is that maybe we can append a slash and then the user ID and get back data from another user. So let's verify this. So now let's try to view another profile. And for this, all we have to do is iterate through all the user IDs. I'm going to take this request and send it to the father. Now I'm going to select just the two last digits of the user ID number and use a number from 0 to 99 with an increment of 1. Let's generate a preview and hit add. OK, now let's start the father. You can see that a new tab called Father has appeared. Let's sort by the code. And it seems that we have three hits. It seems that the ID is 88 at the end. So let's verify this once again. And we get access to bill user. All right, this is good. But what if we want to change the user data. How can we do that? In the second part of the last challenge, we need to edit the user profile, knowing that the API follows a RESTful convention. So let's try to view the profile and see what request we get. It's a GET request. So as you can see here, we have the user ID, which we can change to our target user. In our case, it is 88. And since this is a REST API, we can change the request method to be POST or PUT and see what happens. Now, because we are using a POST request, we need the POST data. And let's see what happens. All right, it says that the post method is not allowed and only put and get are allowed. So let's just change that to put and try to send the request. And we have an unsupported media type, meaning that we just need to change the content type HTTP header. As you can see here, it's application www formula encoded. And all we have to do is change this to JSON. All right. So now we have a different response, but we need to change the color to red and change the role to something lower. So let's change that. Let's make it role one. We also need to change the target user ID here. All right, now we've successfully changed Bill's color to red. So in this challenge, we need to get rid of all the five-star customer feedback. All right, so let's see where the customer feedback feature is located. Here it is. Okay, here we can enter a comment, put a rating, and let's resolve the captcha. Let's hit submit and see what the request looks like. You can see that we have a call to slash API slash feedbacks with a post and with our object here, which contains the capture ID, the capture solution, the comment and the rating. So if we want to get rid of all the feedbacks, let's play with the request once again. So because this is a REST API, let's change the post to delete. And then as we did before with the profile page in the Wasp web code, let's add the ID of the feedback here. Let's send this request and right away we see that we have a 401, which means that we don't have authorization to perform this action. So let's try to log in. And let's try to replay it here. All right, we get a success, meaning that we potentially deleted the rating with ID number one. So let's try to iterate over all of these IDs. Let's say the first 50 feedbacks and see what happens. Let's send this to the father and select our ID. Let's select the numbers payload and go from zero to 
50. Let's start the puzzle. Okay, we see a bunch of 200 okay responses, which means that the potential related feedbacks are deleted. Let's take this one, for example. Okay, seems that this is the original one. This is the feedback with ID2. We've removed it as well, all the way to the A feedback. And if we go back here, we have successfully solved the challenge. Let's now go to the third challenge here. We need to edit a user's existing review. All right, so this means that the vulnerable feature is the review. And again, this is what you usually do when you discover the application. You try to find all the features. So if we go to the products, we have reviews here. So let's enter our own. And let's edit it also, just to collect as much requests as we can. Again, this is what you should do in a real-world application. Try to collect as much endpoints as you can. Now, on to Zap, we see that we have a patch request. And notice that the ID here is somewhat cryptic. We can't really guess it. It seems like... It's a base64 encoded string. Let's try to decode it. And you can see that the string is not an ASCII string. Now let's try to see if we can bypass the, the fact that the ID is hard to guess. So in this endpoint, we get a list of the reviews using a get HTTP header. And the response contains a list of all the reviews. And as you can see, for each review, we have an ID corresponding to the review. So what we can do is take this first review, one of my favorites, which was posted by the admin, and change it based on this ID. Let's copy it and go back to the patch request where we have the comment ID. Since we found a way to collect all the IDs, now we can target each ID at a time. So let's repeat this request once again. And now we can just change the ID here. Let's make it different and send it. And we get a 200 OK, which means that our request has been successfully executed. But let's go back and verify that ourselves. All right, you saw here that we were able to change the original admin comment. That's it! You're now ready to find IDOR vulnerabilities on your own. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, stay curious, learn new things, and go find some bugs.